Hello, welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. Delighted to be joined by Ireland under 21 and Derby County midfielder Jason Knight, who's also in isolation like myself. Jason, how are you? how's things? Yeah, I'm all good. I'm all good. Just like you say, in isolation, away from football for a few weeks. So, not that what, not that great. What's that been like for yourself? Obviously, day to day football for you is it is your life? What's it been like having to be stuck in isolation? You're the first footballer I've spoke to uh, in this situation so far. Yeah, it's, it's different. Obviously, you want to be out playing football on the grass and stuff, but it's obviously more important things in life and you have to look after your health and, and everyone else's health so far. Yeah, well, firstly, I just want to say thanks for taking the time out to have a chat with me. No worries, no worries at all. Um, but you've had a great you've had a great season so far and a great start to your career. You only turned 19 last month. Um, but talk to me uh, about your early days. For anyone who might not know, about you, how is what age you started playing football, um, and then we'll continue on from there. Um, I suppose just like anyone else, four or five, I went down to my local team, Cabin Teeley. Only lived down the road, so went down there at a young age and and just started with the the under under fives or under sixes, whatever it was, and, and just went from there. Um, what was that? Because Cabin Teeley in recent years have obviously gone on to be in the League of Ireland club and stuff like that. So, what was the setup like back then? Um, it was good, but it wasn't wasn't what it was like now. They didn't have the League of Ireland team, like you say, and and a lot of other things they have now. But it was great, and it's great to see them progressing like they are. Yeah, because I always see them online. Whenever you do well or anything like that, they're they're always singing your praises, which is lovely to see. That fact that you know sometimes when people leave clubs, and I know you you, you went over to England for the better your career, but a lot of people, a lot of clubs, don't really sing the praises. So it's great to see them every time you kick a ball. Really, they're they're saying nice yeah. things about you. No, they've been great for me and, and I still keep in, in touch with a lot of the people from there that, that helped me grow up and helped me improve my game. And um no, it's great to see them. Great to see them doing well, like I say. Yeah. When you were a young lad, who was your biggest influence growing up? It could be someone off Cabin it could be someone your your dad, it could be whoever. It probably is a lot of people. My dad obviously mainly me my family growing up. But I had a lot of lot of coaches and a lot of players that helped me grow up through Cabin Teeley. Andy Royce, who passed away not long ago, and, and a lot of other people, not just in Cabin Tilly, but through the Ireland set up as well. Yeah. Who who was your um, football idol? Who who was the one that, when you watched him, said, I want to be like him? Um, I guess it was probably Messi, even though we're not kind of the same player, obviously. But um, Matt, I used to watch him all the time and watch all the YouTube videos of him and, and seeing what he he was given to the game. Yeah, well, as you were growing up, then did you follow anyone in England or anything like that? Um, I used to watch Manchester United. Obviously, a boy growing up supporting them and watching them win all the the Premier Leagues and Champions Leagues was was what I wanted to do. And I'm still striving for that. Yeah, and obviously you're playing now with a uh, with a Man United lad. We'll kind of we'll get to that in a, in a few minutes. Um, but this season and I suppose been the last season, what's it been like the step up? I suppose from Playing out in Ireland to going over to England, what's what's it been like? Because you're you're only a young lad, really, and a lot of people find it hard going over and doing it. And you've to date have done it quite well. No, it was it was difficult, especially at the start going over from my scholarship and and settling in right away was was a difficult transition. But we got used to it, and there's a lot of good people over there to help me through it, and they're they're down to the success I'm having at the moment. And just in regards with, with Derby County, when you first heard of their interest or anything what was it that that made you want to go there did you have interest from other clubs at the time i had a few interests from a few different clubs but i went to derby and, and the environment that they created there was was something different that i've never seen before and it really attracted me to the club and and they've been great with me so far was there a particular influence there or it was just the surroundings and stuff like that was that took you back i wouldn't say it was a particular person or or a thing i would say it was a, a collective the way the club was run and the environment that was created by everybody in the club was was something I wanted to be involved in. You know, when when you were when you first went over, was Frank Lampard the manager with Derby, or was there um, someone else in charge? Tom? First, when I went over, I was fifteen, sixteen. I think the manager was Steve McLaren or Nigel Pearson. I'm not too sure which one at the moment, but one of them was the manager, and I was just I was just trying to get into the youth team at the time and. I don't really remember a lot about the first team those days. I was just sort of focusing on my own game. 
Yeah, well, sorry, I thought, I thought you went over a little bit later, but um, just in regards, last season, um, towards the back end, he was starting to get a, a run under Frank Lampard. What was it like? I suppose Frank's obviously gone on now as manager of Chelsea, but what was it like playing under someone who had such a, I mean, the success that man had at Chelsea was unbelievable. But what was it like having him coaching you, in, an insight to the mind of yeah, him? It was great to have someone like that gaffer's prestige coaching and, and teaching you your way, especially being a midfielder yourself. It's it's great to learn off experienced players and, and legends like himself and, and the players that have gotten the team now. I know you mentioned Messi in regards to uh, uh, an oil ground, but would, would Lampard have been one of those as well? Considering yeah, what he was doing in the Premier League at the time, and I'm sure you would have been growing yeah, up watching him. All-time goal scorer for, for Chelsea. He's, he's someone I'm trying to emulate my game on and score more goals and get more assists. So it was a real, real big factor in me trying to get better. Yeah, and, and, and you have got better, to be fair. You've, you've, you've gotten into the team and stuff like that. But did he work specifically with you on, on improving parts of your game? Yeah, definitely. He came over to me and, and he used to talk to me, give me little tips all the time, especially towards the end of the season that was I was trying to get into the, the squad and he used to help me a lot especially in, as a midfielder he, he gave me little tips and pointers yeah he seems like a great fellow I met him he came over in um, the summer there with, with Chelsea to play Pats and Bowles and uh, he seemed like a great fella and he just seemed very very open and you could go to him to talk to him about stuff now obviously I wasn't going to go and talk to him about stuff but I'm sure for players he's very open in that aspect, no, as a manager, he was he was a very open manager, and you can go and speak to him, him and him and all the staff were at the moment, and it, it was a great environment to be involved in. Yeah, and now just to make your manager now is Philip Koku. For me, you know, I started watching football, which I spoke to you off air about, and I, I said to you like that Dutch team that he used to play in were unbelievable. And obviously, we had a bit of um, glory against him in two thousand two as well, or two thousand one with uh, McAteer scoring, but. Just guys, again, I, I talk about really good midfielders and being your manager. Did they specifically work on parts of your game? Being a midfielder, would he bring yeah. something to you that maybe you wouldn't have known before? Now, coaches are supposed to do that. We all know that. But in particular, yeah, yourself? I think, personally, I've been blessed with the, the people that have come into the building and the experienced midfielders, like you say, Frank, the gaffer, Wayne, who's in the building now. I think I've been, I've been blessed with some really experienced players and, and players I can learn a lot of. Yeah. Talk to me about this season. I believe you have um, 22 games, uh, four goals and one assist. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the, in the championship. Yeah, I think so. So talk to me about this season, your development. Because um, the start of the season, were you expecting to be so heavily evolved uh, around this time? Obviously, we're in isolation now, but... Yeah. Previous to that, you were doing really well. You were flying. Yeah, I think at the start of the season, coming off the back of the end of last season, I was just gonna try my best and get training with the first team and get involved with them full time. That was me, me plan at the start. And then, obviously, the way things have progressed, I've started to play a few games. I've scored a couple of goals. It's um, it's gone probably better than I, than I thought it would. Yeah, when you're when you're looking at it, um, and I know you were probably waiting for this question, but. Everybody's asking about Wayne Rooney. Um, he's come out. He's praised you. Um, he 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 said he reminds or you remind him of himself. What's it been like to to hear that type of stuff off someone? I mean, he's Man United's all time top scorer. He's England's all time top scorer, and broke onto the scene quite quite young like yourself. Yeah, it's obviously great to have someone like Wayne say good things about you, but it's only. It's only field to go and improve and get better, and and he's he's great with that and great with me with that. And what's he like on a day to day basis with you? Does does he, considering you're one of the young lads there, does he come up and have chats with you one on one, or does he does he go out of his way to look after you type of thing? Arm around the shoulder. He's, he's great with everyone. To be fair, he's a he's a great pro and he's great with everyone, especially us young lads. He comes and comes and helps us all the time if we want to ask questions. He's always there and he's always always ready to answer some questions for us. Yeah, um, a lot of people ask him what his um his work ethic is like in training. Yeah, it's it's really good. It's it's like you expect from a, a world class player like he was, and he he still emulates that today. Yeah, because I I actually watched him a lot uh, at Everton when he came back, and he was very helpful towards the likes of uh, Dominic Cavalier and 
Tom Davis and so on. So he seems to be really like that in regards to the youngsters. And I think he's going to go on to be a really good coach. Well, I think that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to help his coach and, and he's still a great player at the moment. So I think he can do both at the moment. He's got the best of both worlds, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so talk to me a little bit about Ireland then. Um, the under-21s, it's a fantastic team of, like, every single one of you seem to really get what it means playing for Ireland and you really seem to have a great camaraderie between the whole lot of you. So what's that been like with with Stephen Kenny? He seems to have kind of got a lot of you together and he's have a great spirit about you, I think, anyway, from watching this. Yeah, it's been... It's been a really successful campaign so far and obviously we've still got games to go but so far it's been a really good campaign and it all started when we went to Toulon but for me anyway it started when I went to Toulon last July last June July yeah that was last yeah. summer yeah. yeah last summer and we sort of we sort of all gelled a lot there and and we've come come on leaps and bounds so far I've seen anyway in the games and performances yeah, Stephen Kenny actually he came out and kind of said that, you know, a lot of people after the Toulon tournament, before that they hadn't played a lot of first team football with their clubs. And after that, then they all, well, I don't know, I'm not sure if all of them, but majority of them went on to play first team football for their clubs then after that. Is this uh, Toulon tournament something that you see really beneficial for young lads' development for the future? Well, definitely for, for the group that we got, it was. It looked very beneficial and a lot of us went on to play for staying in football a lot this year. So I think it was a great tournament and, and we done, we done very well in it. Yeah. Um, now, at the moment, um, qualifiers that you have for yourselves are postponed. And same with the playoffs as well. A lot of people talking about you being in the squad. Um, now it might get pushed back a year. Do you think that if you keep going the way you're going, if, well, obviously football gets back to where we hope it yeah. will be. Uh, do you think you may have a chance of getting into the squad? I don't know. Without putting not, too much pressure on yourself. Yeah, it's yeah. not down to me, but I'll just I'll just try my best. And that's everyone's ultimate goal, going through the ranks at the youth age, and is to try and get in the first team. And if I keep playing and hopefully keep doing well, I'll I'll, I'll put me put my name in the hat. Yeah, well, and even if you don't, if you look at it, um, to represent Ireland at an under twenty one tournament as well, just so close in that regards. Um, I think it's three games left. We have is it? Yeah, yeah. So um, to this this was supposed to be this this tournament and the following one in October. Yeah, well they're all gonna be rescheduled now. We, we don't even know because yeah. this you know, coronavirus is it's a nightmare and you know the world uh pandemic that we're having at the moment. But all going well, um we'll either be in a in playing the Euro twenty twenty one or playing for the under twenty ones at a tournament. That's all all going well anyway. Yeah, hopefully we can. In these last three games, we can get the, the results we need and, and hopefully get to our first under-21 European finals. Yeah, well, Jason, I think we'll, we'll leave it there um, with uh, with that. Thanks very much for coming on and giving us some your time. Uh, hopefully, you'll get back out of isolation sometime soon. And don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. And again, huge thanks to Jason for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you.